What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and in this video I'm going to talk about the concept of the inverse of a function. Actually in the next few videos I'm going to talk about it. And to explain this concept I'm going to jump straight into an example where we have to find the inverse of the function x squared plus 2 which is just a regular parabola that's been shifted up by two units. And I'm going to show you how to find the inverse in multiple different ways. And the first way that you could do it is with a table of values. So what we can do is we could take this function, we can make a table of values for it. So let's maybe do negative uh, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And if we plug these values for the uh, x value in the function, we'll have negative 2 squared, which is positive 4. And then when we add 2, that becomes 6. And then negative 1 squared is positive 1 plus 2 gives us 3. 0 squared plus 2 gives us 2, 3, 6. And so now what we could do, we have the table of values for the function. And so all we do for the table of values for the inverse of a function is we just switch the x and y values. Now one thing I want to make a note of is that this here, actually I'll write it up here, this is just a notation for inverse. of f of x, whatever the function you have that you're working with. So this doesn't mean that we're taking the function and we're taking it to the power of negative 1. The negative 1 is just notation. So just think about this as just a symbol for the inverse of a function. So if you see them asking for that, they're asking for the inverse. So back to this here, the table of values for the inverse is just going to be all of the x and y values for the function interchange. So instead of negative 2 and 6, we're going to have 6 and negative 2. Instead of 3 or a negative 1 and 3, we're going to have 3 and negative 1. 2 and 0, 3 and 1, uh, and then 6 and 2. Now the second way you can do this is algebraically. And the way you do that is you basically interchange the x and y values and then you isolate for y. So let me show you. So if I rewrite the function x squared plus 2, remember f of x is just notation for y. So we could put y equals x squared plus 2. And what I like to do here is interchange the x and y. So we'll have x equals y squared plus 2. And then what we have to do is we have to isolate for this y. So notice we can bring the plus 2 over, so we'll have x minus 2 equals y squared. Actually, you know what? I'm going to rewrite it as uh, y squared equals x minus 2. And then to isolate for the y, we square root both sides. So y would equal the square root of x minus 2. And because we're square rooting it, this could be plus or minus. So if we took this here, made a table of values for it, maybe with the x value 6, 3, 2, 3, 6, we would end up with these corresponding y values, right? And you don't have to leave it as y equals plus or minus root x minus 2. You can bring in this notation here. So we could say the inverse is plus or minus x minus 2 square root of x minus 2. So this here is the algebraic form of the inverse for this function here. Now the third way that we can do this is graphically. And the inverse of a function is always going to be the reflection of the function over the line y equals x. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I drew out a Cartesian plane there. And what I'm first going to do is I'm going to graph the function. So I'm going to use these points here. So we got negative 2 and 6. That's up here. Negative 1 and 3. You got 0 and 2. 1 and 3, and then 2 and 6. So as I mentioned, it's just a parabola that's been shifted up by 2 units. So this here 
is the function f of x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the inverse. So I'm going to use this table of values here. So we got 6 and negative 2. So an x value is 6 and negative 2 that is down here. And then we got 3 and negative 1 over here. And then we got 2 and 0. Then we got 3 and positive 1. And then 6 and positive 2. Uh, that's up here. So if I connect all of these dots, notice we end up with a sideways <coughs> parabola. And that there is the inverse. And if you notice, this, or it doesn't matter which one, this is a reflection of this over the line y equals x, or this is a reflection of this over the line y equals x. If I draw the line y equals x, so you got 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, 1 and 1, or negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3. If I just draw a dotted line, this graph is not necessarily to scale, but I'm doing my best here. So this is y equals x. Notice if we take this function and reflect it over this line, y equals x, we end up with the inverse. Or if we take the inverse, reflect it over the line y equals x, we end up with the function. And when you reflect something over y equals x, that basically means that you're interchanging the x and y values. So that's where this and that relate. And you can actually see it on a point by point basis. So for example, if I take this point, 1 and 3 on the function, and I reflect it over this line here, I'd end up with 3 and 1. Or if I take this point, 0 and 2, and reflect it, a direct reflection over this line is going to be that point, 2 and 0. Right? So you're just interchanging the x and y values. And then a fourth way that you may run into is reversing operations in reverse order. And here's what I mean by that. So if we take our function f of x, we can actually describe in words what's happening. So if we take our x value and we can call this here our input. So we're inputting some kind of number for x. What are we doing? with that number. If we follow bed mass, the first thing we're doing is we are squaring it, taking it to the power of 2. Um, let's just write square it. So we take that input, we square it, and then what do we do? Then we add 2. And then from there, we end up getting our y value, or our f of x or our output, right? That is the process in words. And so if we want to figure out what the inverse is, we would just go, we would reverse the operations in reverse order. So we would start here now. So our x value would be the input. We're going to go in reverse order, and we're going to reverse the operations. So we have our input. So instead of adding 2, what's the opposite of that? What's the reverse of that? Subtracting 2. So we're going to subtract 2. And then instead of squaring it or taking it to the power of 2, the reverse of that is square rooting it. So we're going to square root. And then we're going to end up with our inverse. So that's going to be our output. Right, so this is the function here, and then the inverse is just the reverse order, and then all of the uh, operations reverse. And if you notice, notice how this here corresponds to this. We're taking an input, x, if we follow bed mass, we have to subtract 2 before we square root it. So we subtract 2, then we take the square root, and we end up with our output for the inverse. And that's pretty much it.
for finding the inverse. Four different ways you can do it. You can do it with a table of values, algebraically, graphically, or you could reverse the operations in reverse order. My suggestion is that when you start off this section, try to do all four ways if possible, even if they're only asking for one of the ways, just because it will make you more comfortable. And it's going to take more time initially, but in the long run, you'll feel more comfortable with this concept of the inverse of a function, and you'll just fly through questions. And so what I'm going to do now is go over more examples in the next few videos dealing with this concept.